In the headlines, Parliament approves close to a $1 billion budget, government to extend concessions on building materials for another year, and Cruz Village anticipated to bring 1 million tourists to the island. Hello and welcome to this edition of National Focus. I'm Kimani Saint-Jean. Stay tuned for details of the headlines, stories and others coming up. Welcome back. Government is taking action to extend the removal of import duty and taxes on building materials as the country continues to rebuild after Hurricane Maria. Following the September 2017 storm, government quickly moved to eliminate these duties to ensure that citizens had ready access to building materials for the restoration of homes and businesses. Government also procured building materials in the amount of $17 million. Speaking at Parliament last week, the Honourable Minister for Finance, Dr. Roosevelt Skirt, announced that the concessions, which ended in June of 2018, will be reinstated. From discussions with the private sector representatives, it appears that a significant number of local merchants were challenged with the importation of the unprecedented quantities of building materials required to commence an immediate national rebuilding program. As a result, to accelerate the overall reconstruction process, government imported building materials to the tune of EC $17 million. However, government recognizes that there is still a need for extending support and further stimulating business recovery, notwithstanding its likely impact of the revenue base. We have therefore decided to grant a waiver of import duties on the same list of items for which a waiver of import duty was granted after the Hurricane Maria. These concessions will apply to registered businesses in the productive and distributive sectors who are tax and social security compliant and will commence on 1st September 2018 for a period of one year. Meantime, the Honorable Prime Minister has reiterated government's intention to build a new container port as the current Woodbridge Bay port is inadequate. Speaking at Parliament last week, the Honorable Prime Minister said Hurricane Maria exposed these inadequacies and so government is embarking on a plan, on a plan to build a new port in the Canefield area. Conceptual drawings of the new facilities anticipated by the end of this month. The government will relocate the new container port in the vicinity of Canefield. The design and construction of the port will take place into consideration the advanced technology now available for port management and the effects of climate change on port operations. Madam Speaker, we have signed an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding, with a design and construction firm, and we expect to have conceptual drawings by the end of August 2018. Of course, there will be appropriate and transparent public consultation and stakeholder engagement on this important project. In more news from Parliament, the Honourable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, is optimistic that a new cruise village will help government achieve its goal of attracting one million tourists to the shores of Dominica. The Honourable Prime Minister expressed this at Parliament last week as he announced government's intentions to embark on this venture. The government has decided to collapse the ferry terminal and the cruise ship berth into one into one locality, where all the amenities will be included, especially to allow the existing vendors to have the opportunity to improve their setup and see a greater return on those investments. The cruise village will also be transformed into a duty-free zone, which we believe will take advantage of the thousands of French citizens who make use of the ferries. The cruise village, Madam Speaker, will also assist us in achieving our target of one million cruise visitors in Dominica. This target has already been discussed with both cruise partners and national stakeholders. And Parliament has approved the biggest budget in the nation's history. On Tuesday, an amount of $978.1 million was approved for capital works and recurrent expenditure for the 2018-2019 financial year. 
The Honorable Minister for Finance, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, brought the debate to a close, saying that this budget has set Dominica on a path of sustainability. This budget and the other policies and programs which the Labour Party has enunciated speaks to the diversification of our economy and ensuring that as far as practically possible, we place our economy on a more sustainable footing. So that any shock which we, we experience, we can better withstand those shocks, man. Because the shocks will come. Whether through natural disasters or external shocks, they will come. But we must continue a very rigorous approach to expanding and diversifying our economy to ensure that we can continue to create jobs, create wealth for people, and to let our economy grow as we've seen it growing over the last several days, Madam Speaker. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Welcome back. The Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, met one-on-one -on -one with residents of Trafalgar to hear their concerns. Residents gathered at the Trafalgar Primary School on Wednesday and were greeted by the Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable Member of Parliament for that constituency, Dr. John Colin McIntyre. The Honorable Member of Parliament is pleased that the Honorable Prime Minister could take time off his busy schedule to meet with residents. Yeah, today we have what you call a sort of an open day and what we decided to do is to come to the site here first, visit the apartment construction excavation taking place, look at the Lily Valley um, Petrocasa has been rehabilitated, visit some of the folks in the Lily Valley area and then we'll move on to the school and upper village where we'll visit some folks and we'll climax at the Trafalgar school where we'll have a one-on-one -on -one with the people. They'll come in to us, they'll discuss with us, as you know there are numerous problems, people facing problems. Hurricane Maria really gave us a blow, damage our housing, lost furniture, lost items, household items, you name it, displacement of people, some people are still living under, you know, sort of conditions that, you know, still a little below our sort of standard. We, uh, what, uh, the plan here is to look at all possible options for people. We've just passed the budget, as you realized yesterday, and all aim in the budget, there are a number of different programs under this budget that we passed post Maria in making Dominica the first climate resilient country. So I think today is a great day for our people. They can come in here and we can speak about the resilience of our people in Trafalgar. Preceding the meeting, the Honorable Prime Minister did a walkthrough in the community and visited the site in Lily Valley where government will be erecting 12 apartment complexes for residents. The clearing works for the construction of these apartments is progressing smoothly. Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre says the housing stock in his constituency was dealt a hard blow after the devastation caused by Hurricane Maria. He says providing comfortable living conditions for his constituents is in keeping with government's promise to provide housing for those in need. This is a long-awaited um, project. This project is something that, you know, this is Lily, Lily, Lily Valley land that government purchased some time ago in terms of acquisition and, you know, and the plan of this land is to cater for young mothers or young families. A lot of our people in the Rosa Valley, in particular Trafalgar, where we are right now, there's hardly any room for expansion and because of, the because of that, government decided let us purchase more land so we can build more of these apartments for people. The people are very, very um, happy for it. They, are, they, they, they come visit it, they see what's happening here and this is a promise we gave to the people some time ago. We always keep our promises but what we have here today is given the experience from Hurricane Murray and the damage that was done to our housing stock, I see this as a great one. Contractor on the project, Felix Thomas, updated GIS News on the project. He says now that work has commenced for the construction of these apartments, the completion time for this project is set for eight months. What we are going to construct here is a building complex that will house 12 build apartments. You will have three, three bedroom apartments. The building will be disposed over three floors. So in a block of three floors, we'll have three, three bedroom apartments. And we will have nine two bedroom apartments in the other disposed um, 
sections of the building. You will see green areas, you will see parking areas in that, in that area. And we are hoping that um, 12 families, you know, will be housed in that area. You give the average size of five, you know, per family because you will have three bedrooms, you will have the two bedrooms. And those bedrooms are large enough where they have space for two beds where you deal with kids. So well over, you know, 60 persons will be housed in that, in that apartment. In other news, the use of marijuana for medicinal purposes will be tabled as a matter for discussion in this financial year. The Honorable Prime Minister spoke of his government's willingness to have frank discussions on the subject while presenting the 2018-2019 national budget in Parliament last week. A task force will be appointed to advance or coordinate public dialogue and the, CARICOM on, and the CARICOM Regional Commission report will serve as a basis for discussion. And I look forward to those discussions and I look forward to the recommendations in respect. Because, Madam Speaker, I mean, the, it, is, it is an illegal drug now, but we have to face the realities of the world. That there are many of our, of our citizens and, and global citizens who are relying on the use of marijuana oil to help them go through the challenges of this cancer which is affecting us. And we cannot be unmindful of that, Madam Speaker. We have to look at this. However, the issue of marijuana use is complex and requires careful consideration, Honorable Scared says. The Dominica leader believes that the issue should be looked at, bearing in mind the welfare of the nation's children. We also have to be mindful of the fact that we have to ensure that these drugs are not available to the children of our country. Because we have seen in our society what drugs have done to families and our children. And we must ensure that systems are put in place to protect our children. Throughout. And finally, this news time, retired public officers earning less than $300 from the Dominica Social Security will see an increase in their pension. The Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance announced this at Parliament last week. This decision comes as government continues to take measures to alleviate the financial challenges of citizens as work to reduce poverty continues. In reviewing the list of former public officers, who are currently receiving a government pension. It was noted that a number of them received less than $300 per month. Some, in fact, Madam Speaker, received only $50 per month. Madam Speaker, this is certainly untenable. Effective August 1, 2018, no public officer who receives a government pension will receive less than $300 per month in government. <laughs> Speaker, by that decision, 180 families will be impacted immediately. We trust, Madam Speaker, that this will bring some level of relief to many of those who will benefit the 180 families across the country. The Honorable Prime Minister says this amount is based on the research that $300 is sufficient to meet the basic needs of citizens. Bienvenue à ce nouvel accueil, non, c'est Shaki Repair. Premier ministre, Honorable Dr. Roosevelt Scarry, joint AP Residence Trafalgar pour tant de problèmes qu'il a expérimenté. Résidence Stevini en Sam à l'école Premier Trafalgar là, Mike Wedi Simon Sala. Et puis joint et puis Premier ministre là, et puis même Parlement pour constituency Sala, Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre. Mam parle maladi, i bien plaisi, Premier ministre Scarry pointant, hod tout sa yini pou fè, pour jouer et puis ses résidences là. Avant le premier ministre là, et puis même parlement là, jouer et puis ses résidences là, il a marché en village là, et puis visiter le placement là, en Lely Valley, le gouvernement a bâti 12 appartements dans le monde qui était pète caillou après le cycle de Maria. Travail pour commencer à bâtir ces appartements là, commencer et puis faire bien pour 
Je ne parle pas là pour constituency ça là, dit cycle Maria, c'est dommage yon lokay à constituency ça là et puis moun besoin bon kay. Il dit pour pouvoir place qui bien confortable à constituency là, c'est yon manière et ka tienne et puis promettre gouvernement pour pouvoir kay ba moun ki besoin. C'est appartement là qui est fini en 8 mois. En d'autres nouvelles, le Premier ministre et le ministre des Finances, Honorable Dr. Isabel Skerritz, qui a le village Cruz Neff, là, qui a été Dominique pour jouer un rôle pour recevoir un million de touristes à Dominique. Le Premier ministre a fait parole à la Parlement la semaine passée, quand il a annoncé une attention au gouvernement pour faire le Cruz Village. Ça, là. Le gouvernement a attention là pour mettre le ferry terminal là et puis cruise ship berth là à Sam. La tour est qui a fait tout ça au bout de et puis là c'est Rivadez là qui a fait place au Ravan Primaire pour voir plus d'investissement. Le village ça là qui est aussi yon qui est duty free qui a tapé attention là pour les pile citoyens français qui a servi le bateau là. On a vous scared de manière là pour taper un million de touristes là, j'ai discuté et puis partner Cruzio et puis Steco là, secteur touristes là à Dominique. Et puis finalement, le gouvernement a pris action pour faire le temps la plus long pour tirer les taxes à ce matériau pour faire que le pays a continué pour rebâtir après Cyclone Maria. Après Cyclone Maria, le gouvernement fait manœuvre pour tirer ses duties là pour faire certains citoyens tenir accès pour le matériau pour faire caillou et pour pour rebâtir caillou et puis business yo. Le gouvernement a aussi pour le matériau à valer 17 millions de dollars pour aider les gens qui caillou été dommagé après Cyclone Maria. Pendant qu'il était parlé en Parlement la semaine passée, le Premier ministre Honorable Dr. Isabel Skerritt dit qu'une session qui était finie en juin l'année ça là, qui allait pour plus long. Honorable Skerritt dit même si le gouvernement a tapé ses matériaux ça là, le gouvernement a aussi voulu que les gens qui ont une business opportunité là pour taper ses matériaux là pour vendre pour faire l'argent. Ces concessions ça là, c'est pour faire business en qui a enregistré à ce secteur ça là. Concession Sala qui a commencé en septembre l'année Sala et puis qui a allé pour yon l'année. Ça c'est tout pour nouvelle à quoi yon, non, moi c'est Chaki Au revoir. In today's tip, learn how to get rid of debt. One way to get rid of personal debt is by using the debt snowball. To do this, List your debts from smallest to largest, regardless of interest. Pay the minimum on all the debts except the smallest. Squeeze everything you can out of your budget and attack the smallest debt with all the extra money you can find. When you've paid off that one, take the money you were putting toward it and begin paying the second smallest debt. Keep at it until your debt's ready. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS on facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow us on Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Kimani Seja. Thank you for watching.